So this is the 6 to 1 positioner and it has a dual shaft on it and a 5C collet connection. Um, can probably pretty hard to see on the camera but there is a taper in there and a bolt pattern. So we have a 6 to 1 and this here is a 30 to 1. Uh, this is a worm drive, this is a belt drive. And this is a, not a shaft, but a bore that turns at 30 to 1. And what we need to do is hook the rotary axis perpendicular to, or the rotary axes together perpendicularly. And the configuration that we want it in, we want our part to be in the center line of both, ideally. That's going to make software correction a lot easier. Um, so I haven't quite figured out what orientation I want it in, and since this is a square bolt pattern, it actually doesn't matter. We can unbolt it, re reconfigure it as necessary. Um, <clears throat> so we can, on the machine, just, just the design here, we can block this up so that this has clearance to go from a minimum angle sort of to a maximum angle. Um, so I'm not worried so much about clearance. What I am worried about is clearance for the spindle. And let me, let me demonstrate that. Alright, so I have this mocked up and we're looking through one of the we're looking through one of the rotary axes and you know perpendicular to the other now let's say that this was the spindle so if we pretend that the camera would be fixed relative to this plate and my spindle were here as i rotate it the spindle would move around this axis okay and then this you know turning wouldn't change the view at all if we don't have the part, if this green thing were the part, if we don't have the part, when when we rotate the spindle around, we'd have to chase the part around. And you can really see that on some of the five axis videos, uh, you know, online. So if we drop this down to here, and the spindle's going to be, we'll say, you know, this might be a three axis spindle, so, so it'll go. But when it rotates, this part will go like this and the and the mill will have to chase the part see so it's gonna have to as it's machining the spindle is gonna have to come in and out to sort of follow that around versus if it's here the spindle can stay stationary and the part can just uh, sit there and get machined so sort of a poor demonstration but you get the point so in designing this we really need to know what our planned offsets gonna be so that we can make the bracket hold our other axis and we'll have the best offset that we can. Now granted you want to be able to put different parts in here, different, different collets or whatever you want to do, but in the end the better that you can set that or if you plan for this offset it'll be better for you. So the other consideration, let me set this back up here. Now let's say that these things move together here and, and we'll just sort of move our spindle around. The other consideration is clearance. So if you want to undercut that with a, with a long tool, we can only go from this angle to probably even realistically about here, given that you're not going to have a, a six inch tool and the spindle is probably going to be something like this. So you're only going to be able to go plus minus 90 with this with this setup anyway. Um, so let, let's start whittling on the bracket. Uh, let's get a better sense of what's got to happen here. So our our spindle or our slow ro fast rotary axis we'll call it we need to have a block that goes onto it something like this and be able to catch some of these bolt holes and I'd like to have a taper that seats it here so that it'll automatically be centered 
for this bracket and we'll maybe we'll only have to error map it once and then until we take it off never do it again and then you know we could probably even test the repeatability but then uh, this this should be something like this and maybe I don't I guess looking at the clearance we should bolt it right to the top so maybe we'll have some kind of circular bracket or or uh, or a, a sort of a horseshoe thing uh, I'm not sure what we should do there um, but but anyway here's the block that's there's our piece of raw stock I, the first thing we should do is face the inside of it put a taper on it and and see where we're at so let, let's let's do that first again I say whittling because this is exactly what we're doing is whittling but that's that's the fun of building one-off products is you could do that one quick thing that I wanted to discuss is the error error budget for this bracket and I think it's really important to um, sort of think about these things while you're making a part and, and for me I have all this stuff in my head it's, it's just important to, to voice it so what, what, what I'm gonna say is this that it doesn't need to be perfectly square or perpendicular or any of that because what we're going to do is error map the machine once it's built. But the only thing that I think the only dimension that really we should have it as square as possible is the perpendicularity of this axis to this axis. And what I mean by that is you can see here that just the way this is bolted up it's not it's not square so if if we wanted to come in and machine on this face, you could tell that our mill is going to have to come in and out with two axes just to stay here on one. So the more, the more perpendicular that we can get this, the better. Now obviously we've got fine control around this axis, but because this is a worm drive, I think it's a 31 and 200 steps, so it's something, you know, it's, it's, it's very small. Um, but on this axis here, in terms of rotating around here, it's only thir uh, 6 to 1, I'm sorry, 6 to 1 with 200 step motor. So it doesn't matter that our bracket is not perpendicular um, to, or, or to this bore, or to this bolt pattern or whatever, because we can only position this thing to uh, one sixth of 1 1.8, 18, so it's something, I don't know, say a third of a degree or something like that. So, it, so that's our tolerance for square on, on this, uh, rotationally to this bolt pattern. So again, and everything else doesn't matter. So the only thing that we really need to have perpendicular is this face to this face. Everything else doesn't matter. Our alignment to this spindle here to this is critical and that's it. So our perpendicularity from face to face and alignment from one uh, center line to the other. Those are the only two critical dimensions. So we can have slots to turn this and get it dialed in uh, and all of that but in the end what's going to happen is it's going to get software corrected and uh, you know the machine needs to be set up or be able to be set up to accommodate the lack of fine positioning on this stage and essentially all of this weight hanging this far off of the spindle so Let's let's go in here and, and square this up. Just get true it up. Let's get a, a good baseline so that we can measure and, and get it into the lathe. We've got our block mounted up in the mill, and what I have here is this side, the bottom side, 
already faced and we're going to do the top side. Now what, what I'm going to do is we face this side off because it needs to go in the to the chuck of the lathe so I wanted it to be flat and I want these two sides to be flat so that I can index off of each. This way when it's when it's in there we can dial indicate off here, dial indicate off here and put the mill or the mount this in the lathe with the four jaw chuck with the center line in the center of these two parts. That way it'll be easier to put back in the mill or it'll be easier to fix your in any machine when we can dial off the sides and we know that the spindle is right in the center. So let me let me mill that and we'll we'll come right back. Just want to show you how we got this centered. So if we turn this, we got our dial indicator just indexing off this machined face. And what we see is that as we rock it, comes down to zero and reverses. Comes down to zero and reverses. This is going to be hard to do if I, well I have the camera on here, but what I have to do is pull this, just pull this back, move the carriage out of the way, turn it 180 degrees and, and come back and it'll, it'll be the same reading. So it'll be the same reading on the other side. And I can't do it while I'm holding the camera, but I think you get the idea. So keep turning it stops at zero. And if I move this out of the way and bring it back on the other side, it'll do the exact same thing. So we know that that's centered. And if we, there's really no way to know what the center line from the spindle up is until we turn a face and, and then measure that, you know, to measure the diameter and then measure the distance from one end of the diameter to the other side of the face. I mean, in the end, I, I again, we're whittling this, so it doesn't really matter. You know, whatever it is, we'll, we'll measure that in software, correct? <clears throat> so I have it at about the dimension that I want plus or minus a couple thousandths and that is good enough for this part so we'll, we'll start turning our taper index. Just walk you through. I've got our taper machined. I've got it center drilled for the whatever threading. What I think I'm actually going to do is, is bore it through. Um, and then that way, if I want to, if I want to index it later, I can just true it on the bore and cut threads, whatever cut, whatever threads I want. But I'm planning on bolting this using the bolt pattern and not a sort of like a drawbar type thing to hold it into the collet. So I'm going to do that. I'll drill it and bore it, and we'll pull it out of the lathe. Before pulling it out of the lathe, just wanted to give you a shot. We're bored to 775, which gives me uh, about a thousandth or fifty thousandths on each side for thread engagement for a 7 8 bolt or a thread pattern. Uh, but other than that, we are ready to move on to the next step. Got it drilled, center drilled, faced, and relieved. Notice if you can see that relief. And what that's for is just so that if this isn't assembled right, all of these pieces here don't impede mating to the, the face here, which is your which is your mounting surface. So um, just to show you that. So what we'll do now is drill this, bore it. And we should be able to look down this bore and see an intersection. I don't, I don't actually know if that's deep enough, but it's going to be pretty close. Doesn't matter because we're going to be cutting all of this out anyway, but that's the next step.
We made a big pile of chips cutting this out. Uh, we cut both sides out. We have a nice radius in here as a stress relief. And what I'm gonna do now is just knock these corners off for the bolt pattern that we'll put in it. And then we'll maybe run a chamfer around, I'm not sure, but either way, uh, we're, we're getting close. We've got the bracket made here. For the most part, we just need the bolt pattern. We're, uh, we're gonna drill and tap here for this and countersink to go into the, the face plate there. But seats nicely on the rotary axis. If the green part, or if the, if this gauge pin was the spindle or, or I mean the collet part would be right in line with the axis and our 5C register mates nicely with the faceplate no slop whatsoever um, so we're looking good we got plenty of clearance for the spindle and that's about all I'm gonna do for the day